Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a great intro. Thank you, sir. <laughs> What's going on? Matthew Page in the house, hanging out with, with your boy Preston, Fat Samurai Guy in the movie dojo. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to see you. Yeah, yeah. We had uh, the first time we met was at San Diego Comic-Con at the Kung Fu Extravaganza panel. And uh, that was a blast, man. That was a blast. Look at look at that guy. Who is that guy in the left? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus that was so Christ. much fun. That was so much fun. I, you know, that was one of those things um, when we were invited. If you've if you've ever spent any time on the festival circuit or or working on independent films, you think like, okay, we're going to a big event, but is anybody going to show up to our panel? Like, is anyone going to know our movie? Is anybody going to know what, who we are or what we're doing? Yeah, and um, the, you know the actors have a group thread, uh, the the cast of the Paper Tigers, and we were kind of like, is there gonna is it is is this gonna be us and ten people in the room or what? And like, yeah. gosh, the re the reception at Comic Con was so huge. People I heard the yeah. movie. They were yeah. excited about the movie. They were excited oh, yeah. about us being there. It was such an incredible experience. Yeah, I'm so happy for all of you because you know y'all know I love the movie. That's right. I yeah. Represent Paper Tigers, <laughs> baby. I love this movie. It was just perfect. And it was it was such a huge honor uh, to, uh, you know, interview you guys, you know, the director, Bao Tran, Ron Yuan, the Marshall Club guys, and and, and uh, yourself. You know, I had fun uh, talking to you guys, you know, and it was great talking about the movie and stuff like that. But we, we brought it back, baby. We brought <laughs> Kung Fu Stravaganza panel back uh, <laughs> that, was crazy. that year because the year before was, you know, we had to do it online only because, uh, you know. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. That was the first big year back. Uh, yeah, brought it, and um, you brought it yeah, back what, hard, man. Oh, the crowd, the crowd loved yeah. it. And, and yeah. And, and I wasn't I wasn't familiar. You know, I, I had never been to I'd never been to the to the big the big Comic Con yeah. in San Diego. And I also uh, I was really excited about the format of the Kung Fu Extravaganza, like all these incredible clips of famous kung fu movies uh there was all it was such great content it's so exciting to be around i love movies i love martial arts and when you get to combine yeah. them um meeting other people who are as excited about the genre and everything as you are is is always so much fun oh yeah oh yeah and uh, it's always uh, amazing seeing the audience reactions to the fights and uh it's yeah. always it's, it's all worth it it's priceless whether yep. it's laughter <laughs> or they're cheering or screaming yep. that's what yep. it's all about and last year uh it was even better bigger and better last year uh the oh, awesome. the panel yeah uh shout out to rick myers and and frank jang but yeah man love talking to you guys about look at the, look at look at the tricep man that's, look at the I, sap I, do, you, do you see do you guys watch was, it right now do you guys see the sap I got, <laughs> I had, I think I had seven weeks from, from the moment I was on my way back from a Master Ken live appearance and I was changing planes in an airport and Bao called me, um, which surprised me because I had interviewed for that role like a year and a half earlier and I was, yeah. didn't hear anything and I was like, well, I guess I didn't get that part. And then he called me while I was changing planes and I don't Denver or someplace and was like, Hey, we're greenlit. We start shooting in seven weeks. Do you want to be, do you want the role? And I was like, of course. But I was also like, Oh my God, I have seven weeks to get in shape. Cause I was not, I was not feeling like, you know, I was traveling a lot. I was eating junk food and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, I need to look, I need to look my best. And I have seven weeks to do it. So I like yeah. immediately was like putting down the French fries, getting up and running every morning, trying to be like, okay, I got, <laughs> I gotta be camera ready here. So that was a lot of right. fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, we go. We, we, we got fans watching right now. Release the sep cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so much sep that was cut out. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> it was too much sep. That's right. It was too yeah. much. I didn't want to overshadow the inferior seps. You know what I mean? So I <laughs> there we go. Us. Us. There you go. Us. We got fans showing up right now. There we go. Filmmaker, martial artist, stuntman, Colin uh, Squire watching. What's going on, Colin? Good to see you, brother. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, finally, Red Eclipse has come back to the Movie Dojo Army. Always remember to restop that groin. That's, that's right. right. That's always right, remember. Baby. Always remember. That's right, baby. I mean, that character is just legendary. It's so good. Did Did you have an idea that, that the Master Ken character was going to get that big? I absolutely didn't. In fact, that's that's why even, even now our channel 
is still called Enter the Dojo Show, which a lot of people don't even know what that is. That was the original format of that that brought Master Ken to life was this little mini sitcom about what it would you know what it's like in an American McDojo kind of kind of thing with not just crazy Master Ken, but um, some sort of stereotypical the you know the psycho de- uh, uh, overly dedicated brown belt character, the sort of really hyper aggressive female character, the really mousy shy character, um, the yeah. really skeptical orange belt um, uh, that you know it was it was uh, a window into the world of American martial arts, and I was so I I loved the reception that that got, and and then I I really just ended up having to make more videos featuring Master Ken by himself because it became harder and harder to get the cast and crew together. And there was a demand for more content. So I said, okay, well, maybe if I just go into the dojo by myself and I'll just goof off and make little short videos. And then those videos got even more views. And then Master Ken kind of took on a life of his own. Yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, that it's, it's, I, I still can't believe uh, that people are excited about him, that they still want to see him. Uh, we just literally last week, we passed the 1 million subscriber mark on YouTube. That's um, what's up. That's what's up. Congratulations, brother. Congrats. Blows my mind. Thank you so much. I'm so yeah. excited. I got to, I'm, uh, it'll take a few weeks for us to, for them to ship us our gold play button, but that's something that I really never thought would, would ever happen. So every yeah. year that uh, Master Ken continues to endure and, and, uh, and entertain audiences, I'm, I'm, amazed and grateful for every year because i really didn't think it would last this long yeah man i mean it's it's just you know again congrats but it's just (laughs) you know if you're ever having a everybody watching right now if you're having a bad day watch any any master ken video uh you will (laughs) smile you will laugh you will share the video it will go viral you will tell your friends uh because it's just so much fun it's just so that's always our goal is to we you know i i was just talking to uh a recent acquaintance, uh, a friend of mine who does some, some kickboxing and she was, she's from a karate background. And she said, you know, when, when the show, when you, back when you were doing the enter the dojo show, she said, one of our favorite things at my karate school to do was we would finish all of our training. And then we would just sit down as a group and watch the show and just have a laugh. And like, uh, I, I love hearing that. I love that people still enjoy watching the videos and the episodes and, um, and I've been telling people for years that as long as people keep watching, I'll keep producing them. I, I love doing it. Well, you're going to be producing them for a long time, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and Samurai guys going to be watching. I'm going to be right. learning some moves. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to be learning some moves. But uh, we are here today. That's right. To talk about cop versus killer, baby. That's yes. right. But before we get to that, uh, you have been in a lot of awesome uh, projects. Yeah, I'm going to bring some of these projects up, film projects and uh, series and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh, man, I got to I got to ask uh, Matt about some of these projects and your experiences uh, filming them. But before, yeah, sure. Yeah. Before we get into that, uh, we will return right after this quick commercial break. Ready. Master Ken here letting you know that Ameridote belt certificates are back. You can start off by demoting your instructor or students to white belt. You can promote someone to orange belt, blue belt, purple belt, green belt, brown belt, or promote them directly to black belt if their kill face is unstoppable. Get your Ameridote belt certificate today, and remember, always restomp that groin. <laughs> that's great yeah. yeah baby you get all kind of surprises on samurai guy show i didn't know you were gonna that's do right. it that's awesome that's Thank right you. that's right that's right and I, I i did receive my check in the mail thank you oh uh, yes of course I appreciate yeah, your, that. Percentage, your, your percentage is on the way <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness but yeah don't forget guys link is in the description link is in the description that's, that's right. right get your certificates have some fun there all right Okay, but yeah, up first, we're going to be all over the place here. Yeah, hit me. Uh, what do you got? What do you uh, got? Wait, Waco here. Uh, yes. Talk about your experience with this one. I mean, you got the 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 legend there, Michael Shannon. That was so fun. That was such a great, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we, let's see, that was filmed out in Moriarty, which is um, about, I want to say about 40 minutes uh, east of Albuquerque. Um 
they re they built an exact replica of the the compound of the Branch Davidian compound. So like when wow. we were yeah, so like when we would would like uh, our I I played a um uh I think it was a, an ATF agent. I think it was an ATF agent. Um and so we're like holed up in this old cabin right across the street from from the Branch Davidian compound. And it was so surreal because I I'm I'm old enough that uh, I was a kid, but I remember my mother watching the news during the standoff. So like I I I knew what that building looked like yeah. from when from yeah. when that whole thing happened. So to see an exact replica of it built across the the street from where we were filming, I was like, wow, this is a, like being in a time machine. Um, and that was a really great experience. Um, the people who ran the show were great, great crew. Um, great actors, uh, you know, got to spend some time with John Leguizamo, uh, nice. who's a real character. He's, uh, he was a lot of fun to work with. Everybody was fun to work with. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a fun role. That was really just out us out in the, you know, in the middle of middle of nowhere, uh, doing, uh, doing, you know, our role, our small, but important role in, in this big expansive story. It was really great. And this is still a, this is still a Showtime exclusive or. Still on that is, um, I think you can see that on like I, I think when we did it, it was a Paramount. What's there? What is it? Paramount Plus. I think yeah. it started on Paramount Plus, and I okay. think it's gone through a few others. And they did a follow up. Okay. Um, I'm not in the follow up, but they did a uh, an additional uh, follow up, like a sequel or like a continuation of the series recently. Oh wow! So I think okay. you can find that somewhere too. So yeah, okay. yeah, but nice. I wasn't nice. surprised because, of course, like you said, Michael Shannon, a powerhouse actor. Um, who you know, just so brilliant, but so many, everybody involved in that was so good. It was really a great gig. Yeah, Shannon is just insane. <laughs> like he's just so good. <laughs> there is a storm a coming. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just too good. He's just too good. Now I've been wanting to see this for a long time. I've heard great things about Shot Caller. Oh, Shot Caller, that was yeah. so fun. Uh, that was a great gig. Uh, um, that was uh. That was a movie where the the director had actually like I I can't remember if they put it in the script or if I read a blurb about the fact that he had actually worked some sort of situation where he was able to spend time personally at not for as far as I understand not for a crime but he was able to spend time in a federal prison with other uh, uh inmates you know, yeah inmates wow. uh, doing read because he wanted the thing to be as authentic as yeah. possible. He wanted to understand the way they lived, the way they spoke, the way they survived, all those things. And the script was really great. Um, and, uh, that was a, that was a, a really fun gig, uh, as well. Um, and being able to be in a scene with Jamie Lannister, uh, you know, <laughs> was you beat me to it. Real. Yeah. Totally surreal because I was already such a fan. So being able yeah. to being able to have a couple scenes with him was I kind of feel he's an underrated actor. He's fantastic. Like watching him work, working with him and watching him work was was really fantastic. And honestly, uh I was I didn't realize how big he was. He's a big dude. He's tall. He's like, yeah. you know, yeah. he's a formidable uh physical force on set. So that that was a really fun game. Did you see his film last year that came out? It was at, um what was it? Um ah. God, some, something God and Bullet was in the title. Some kind of No, thriller. no, I haven't seen that. I'll have to watch it. Okay, 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 yeah. yeah let, that looked really good. He was like a father. He's trying to uh, trying to find his daughter or something because she got kidnapped. Oh, like, okay. Oh, or something like that. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, no, I'll have to look that up. I, I would love to see it. I love his work. Here's Bullet. I think that's what it's called. Okay, okay. But boom, good cop. Good cop. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> That was a uh, that was a short film um, that ended up going to a bunch of festivals. That was really fun. Uh, uh, that was done locally here. Uh, uh, a, a guy named uh, Keegan Carnes um, did that film. He's a he's a great director and producer who is based here in Albuquerque. He does a bunch of uh, high level commercial stuff. He's really great. It was a great. Uh, uh, this uh, gentleman named Sheridan uh, was the uh, uh, the cinematographer. They actually just did a film. Oh. I'm going to struggle to remember the name. They have a feature film. I want to say it's it's got brother in the title. I'm going to kick myself for not. I, I need a laptop here so I can look stuff up as I'm talking yeah. about it. Um, it's got um, 
uh, who's the guy who plays um, uh, uh, who runs the uh, the the newspaper in the Spider Man movies? Um, Jonah Jameson, yeah. Yeah, who plays Jonah Jameson in the Tobey uh, Maguire ones? Uh, oh my god! Oh right, my god. Now my, it's uh, my turn. That's yeah. My... Uh, chat, chat, help us out here. Jonah uh, Jameson, the actor that plays Jonah Jameson. <laughs> Whiplash. Right. All the movies are exactly. coming in my head. What is it like? He's very famous. Yes. Uh, Simmons. Simmons. J. K. Simmons. Hey. Yes. Hey. J. K. Simmons. Um, Keegan and, and Sheridan just did a movie um, with J. K. Simmons. Um, and uh, I know that they've screened it. I know they've won a bunch of festival awards. Uh, they're a really dynamic uh, filmmaking duo. Yeah. Um, I want right. to say it's called right. Little Brother, but I'll have to look it up. Okay. Um, but, but if you look at J.K. Simmons' IMDb, I'm sure it's on there. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the same filmmaking team as Good Cop, Good Cop, and it was uh, uh, it was super, super fun short film to work on. Nice. Copy that. I, it's all about the face on the right. Like, it, <laughs> it's all about the face. It's a good That's moment. It. It's a good moment. It captures when did, the uh, when did you uh, when did when did you uh, fig, figure out that you were really good at comedy? Was it something you were? It was just natural, or you were know, like, "Hey, I'm good at this." That's a real. That's a good question because um, I had actually steered. I had done some theater and I had done some acting classes, some improv, some scene study, um, and I always enjoyed comedy. But I I was trying to follow the filmmaking route. I wanted to be a writer director. I loved learning about how movies were made and i was i always really enjoyed being behind the camera i thought that process was so fulfilling um very challenging but really fulfilling and so i had read that a lot of famous filmmakers who i really whose work i loved got started doing horror movies uh, doing scary genre pictures and yeah. so i thought okay well I'll, I'll do that and so i i did a bunch of short films that were in that genre Nice. And they, they did okay. You know, they would get into some B and C level film festivals, you know, but never yeah. the never the A list ones. And then just for a change, the the group that I was with, uh, that I was making films with here in New Mexico, um, just off just to do something different, I decided to do a comedy. And so we did this. Uh, we did a thing called the Forty Eight Hour Film Project, where uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, where you have like you should you make a team you show up on friday night with your team and you are assigned a genre a required character a required prop and a required line of dialogue that you have to incorporate into your movie this is to keep people from writing the movie ahead of time oh okay and, and so once you're given those things you're assigned a genre and you now have from friday night until sunday night to write direct shoot edit and deliver a short wow. film Wow, and, and so I just offhand, I just did a comedy. I did a little, I did a little romantic comedy because I thought, you know, we've been doing horror a lot, and I just feel like I should change it up. And we did comedy, and we won the the whole thing. We won a bunch of awards, including best film, and ended up going to an international competition. And so, and then I did it. So I thought, well, maybe that was a fluke. But then I decided to do another comedic short film, and that one went to a bunch of film festivals. And then that was when I was starting to get the the feeling of like. Huh, maybe I have a knack for comedy. Maybe I'm a, a bit better suited for for yeah. comedy. Uh, so I started to lean into that, seeing that whenever I chose comedy as a genre, I got a I got more of a response. So I thought maybe that's my thing. Yeah. Well, well, it's definitely your, your thing. <laughs> and we're glad we're glad you went comedy, but I could see the love also for action in you and martial arts, obviously. Yes. But uh I have to ask this. Um in the future, would you return to horror, but maybe make it an action horror comedy film? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love cross genre uh, pictures. I love I, 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 I love genre pictures in general because I think it's great when people do their own thing or they do like a you know really powerful drama or they do uh, you know they try to reinvent a particular genre. But yeah. the thing that I really love about genre pictures is that there are, there are guidelines, there are parameters, there are things that as long as you give the audience these certain things, yeah, they are there for you. They're like, this is what I want to see. I love, you know, if it's if it's an action movie, if it's a martial arts action movie, then there are conventions of the genre. Right. That as long as you deliver those conventions of the genre, 
the audience will go along with you if you want to try something a little unusual, a little different, a little surprising. Um, and so I love movies that are really creative within an existing format. And so I'm, I'm always super interested whenever I sit down to watch an action movie or a specifically a, a because there's, you know, as you know, there's all these sub genres, you know, and like they right. all kind of have yeah. ru rules within those genres. And so I'm always excited when I sit down to a genre picture to be like, OK, how is this going to deliver what I expect and how is this also going to surprise me? And exactly. so as a filmmaker, I'm really, really interested in doing that also. And that was, you know, with my feature debut uh, with Cop versus Killer, that was the the goal and also the biggest fear was like, am I going to be able to make, to deliver enough of what people are expecting while also hopefully subverting expectations a little bit? Right. Yeah, well, well, you know, after... I watched Cop vs. Killer. The first thing I said was, oh, I can't wait to see what he does next. <laughs> so you're on the right track, my friend. Thank you're on you. the right Thank track. You. But yeah, let's look at some other uh, ones here. I did see this one. This was a pretty decent, uh, pretty good thr uh, thriller drama here. Yeah, that was a great, that was, you know, that's another one. These are, uh, these are great memories for me because uh, even though it's funny how, uh, even if you only work on a movie for one day, um, the experience of working on a movie, especially if you love movies, is so impactful um, that you remember it forever. Um, that particular movie, what I remember is that I, I had a very simple role. Um, I was playing the husband of a, of a bigger character, and we find out something tragic has happened in that movie, and um, we rush over to comfort Ed Harris's character, um, who is who has just received horrible news, and we just needed to be, we needed to help facilitate the weight of that moment. That was our only role that day. Was something awful has happened. We all need to be emotionally in that space, and the director helped talk us through that, and uh, we did the scene with Ed Harris, and uh, what I remember is that. I felt like the scene went well, but I was also very nervous. And we did a few takes, we got everything that we needed. And then after the sort of emotional peak of that moment, they cut and I felt these hands on my shoulders. And I turned around and it was Ed Harris, like giving me, literally giving me a physical pat on the back for doing, wow. you know, for how we did the scene. And I was like, wow. Oh, I was so I was so relieved because if That's you're in amazing. the if you're in the company of a literal acting, you know, film legend, exactly. all I want all I want to do is be helpful. Like how can I how can I just not be in the way? How can I do yeah. whatever I need to do to help him do what he needs to do? And um so for him to for him to have done that very simple thing for me, I just always remember that thinking like, okay, thank God I wasn't in the way. I, I at least yeah. did my job. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I never, I never heard any bad things about Ed Harris. Yeah, working I, on, you know, I've, I've only gotten to do one day on set with him, but it was such a memorable yeah. experience. Copy that. How cool is that, man? Great stories here in the podcast tonight. Great stories. You know, it's, it's, uh, there, there's, it's, it's, uh, it's. There's been enough years that I have, a, I have a, a small stack of them. You know, I've been in this <laughs> business long enough now. I got to handle. Yeah, them. yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, we have a uh, lone survivor here. <laughs> of course, you're gonna bring that one up. Hey, I'm not in it, but I but I worked what? on it. I oh, worked okay. on it. Here's the thing. No, I got I got a story about that. We, okay. <laughs> we, my buddy, uh, great actor, um, uh, Justin Tade. Justin Tade played the mayor in Cop versus Killer, and Justin and I. Uh, worked together for the first time on Lone Survivor. There was uh, a military headquarters scene where we are the command center. We're trying to find out where our soldiers are because we got to send the the rescue helicopter and the rescue like. And at some point, one aspect of the rescue mission fails, and we have to tell the commanding officer. It's this very tense, very important scene. And so Justin and I, like, we, we shot all day uh, with Peter Berg, the director. Yeah. Very intense director, but very, like, very keyed up, very serious about what he does. High energy. I mean, it felt like the most intense 14-hour day maybe ever on set as far as just the pace 
And so we go to see the movie. We go to the premiere. We're sitting there and we're like, you know, we didn't, we, we're, we're watching the plot progress and we're like, Hey, we're up next. Here we go. This is it. This is the bit. And, and, and even in fact, I had kind of a moment where I stand up and I address the commanding officer and the camera's right up in my face. And we, and Peter Berg says cut. And he goes, trailer that's going in the trailer that's the black hawk down moment man that's going in the trailer and i was like yeah it is and <laughs> me and justin are sitting there watching the movie and the scene right before our scene wraps up and we're like here we go and then the movie jumps to the scene right after our scene and we're like <laughs> it's, like, in, it's <laughs> in the trailer like, it stayed like, in the yeah, trailer we're, looking, we're like I don't think we're in the movie. <laughs> and it was like halfway through too. So we, we kept thinking, well, maybe they reordered the scenes or something. And then like the yeah. movie progresses and progresses. We're like, we are not in this movie. <laughs> oh, no. Were you at least we're in the, in the trailer? We're in the credits. Were you at least in the trailer? <laughs> we had, we did not make the trailer. Oh. We did not make the movie. Our Ooh. names are in the credits, which is lovely, but, but that's, that's it. You know, <laughs> it happens. Oh, it happens. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness! My missed opportunity, Mister Berg. You know, we'll we'll work. We'll we'll uh, we'll circle yeah. back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, it'll be a funny story that me and Peter yeah. can joke about when we're yeah. on a big movie together. <laughs> I still I still uh, feel like this is his best movie. It's a great film. I really yeah. yeah like uh, I, I, but even um, even some of his uh, uh, you know, he's done a lot of really serious films um, with with Mark Wahlberg that are really great. But I also remember him doing. Um, he did. Uh, didn't he do the rundown with? Uh, oh, the, the, well, the Rock. Right. He did the rundown with uh, Dwayne Johnson. Underrated right? Like, action movie. Yeah, really great, fun, yeah. action-packed movie. Christopher Walken plays a great villain in that. Like, yeah. he's got a really great. I love his work as a director. He's got such an incredible body of work. You get the Arnold Schwarzenegger cameo. You know, yeah, basically <laughs> passing the torch to the Rock. Basically. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But now we're back to uh, horror here. Horror talk. Okay. What do you? Oh, fourteen cameras. That's a that's another funny one. Uh, as far as like what that was like, that was um, so that was uh, co-directed by a gentleman named Seth Fuller, who is the cinematographer on Cop versus Killer. All um, right. Seth and I did one of our own. Uh, we did a forty-eight hour um, movie. Actually, they have a a, a subgenre one for horror movies. We did a 48 hour horror film festival. And that was the last one we did the last one I did. And we, that was, it seemed a fitting end because I did the romantic comedy years before won a bunch of awards. Then I did a bunch of 48 hours that didn't really win very much. And I was kind of, I, I don't know. I kind of felt like I had peaked and then me and Seth did a horror one and we won a bunch of awards with that one. And I was like, okay, Now's the, now's the time to stop. I'm, I, I won a bunch of awards. I'm going to stop doing 48 hour movies because I want to finish strong. Uh, but Seth was making uh, 14 cameras, which is a sequel to 13 cameras. Right. And he, uh, he asked me to do a, uh, a role as a police officer. So I came out there for one day and he and I had a blast working together and uh, you know, had a, we, we were always, talking about what a great time we had working on that 48 hour project and wishing we could do something bigger. So when I had some financing lined up for cop versus killer, I called Seth and said, Hey, I think this is the one we're supposed to work together on. It's, it's a similar genre. It's a similar visual style to the short that we did. You know, this is something I want to explore. And he said, okay, what's the budget? And I was like, and you know, the cool thing is like the script is really tight. And I think we've got a good cast. And he's like, cool, what's the budget? And I said, you know, the other thing is I think the locations that we're picking are really interesting. And he was like, what's the budget? And I, I told him and he was, he said, he said, Matt, I just swore off micro budget. Like I, I just said, I wasn't going to do any more movies under a certain amount of money. And right. I was like, I know, but I gotta. We gotta work together on this. Right. So we we negotiated, and I eventually convinced him to do the movie, and was so glad because he did an All incredible right. job shooting it. Nice, nice. Copy that. Copy that. Yeah, I know this is a series of move films. Did they remake this recently? 
I don't know if they've rebooted it yet. I know that the okay. I know that uh, that the first one was a big hit, and I think the second one, I think fourteen cameras performed pretty well. Uh, okay. Uh, in addition to that, I don't know how many they've done, but uh, but yeah, I was I was kind of excited when he called me and told me he had a role for me in it because I had I had heard of thirteen cameras being quite a hit, and I and yeah. I said you're directing the sequel to thirteen cameras. That's huge. Oh my god! So that was yeah. a big career moment. You know, I felt nice. like that was that was fun. Well, what's some of your favorite horror movies? Oh gosh, um, you know, I mean, I love Sam Raimi's stuff, and you know, obviously, the Evil Dead's are are, are really classic. But um, even some of his thriller stuff, like a, like a Simple Plan, yeah, uh, you know, um, I love it when he when he's when he has like a bit more of a restrained kind of approach to to his style. But then I also love Drag Me to Hell. Like Drag yeah. Me to Hell is like I watch that at least once a year just because it's so fun and and outrageous and and uh, yeah. that stuff is really great. I love the classics like uh, The Exorcist, um, yeah. uh, Friedkin. I actually had just watched. I just saw for the first time, uh, Sorcerer. Woo! Uh, what Man. incredible! Dude. That blew me away. It blew me away. People have been telling me for years that I needed to see that. And there's a theater yeah. called called the Guild of this wonderful art house theater yeah. um, in Knob Hill in Albuquerque. And I had uh, I saw they were playing the Sorcerer, and I was like, I gotta see this. I, I, I this is finally. Yeah. And I even told my girlfriend, I was like, Hey, we're gonna go see this movie. It's old. And it might be slow, but it's an important film, and we should see it. And right. So we went to see this, and we were both just blown away with the acting, with the storytelling, the cinematography. It was such an incredible film. You just don't have movies like that now. Anymore. No, you can't make movies like that. Like you can't get finance for something like that, where you're driving like yeah. these broken down trucks through the jungle, through the rainforest yeah. and mud, yeah. and and like you know tipping them over into rivers and things like that. Like you can't do stuff like that. Like it, it was such. It was such brave filmmaking and yeah. such masterful storytelling. I was so blown away by that film. But so, yeah, like uh, stuff like Friedkin, stuff like Raimi. Um, and then the more modern guys, uh, you know, um, Ty West. Uh, yeah. You know, I saw, when I saw House of he, the Devil. He came I back was, hard recently. He with, is incredible. Uh, X and Pearl. Yes. It seemed X like he took incredible. a break for I still a need to see Pearl, but I went to okay. see X because I'm such a fan of his. Yeah, um, he's great. And, I, yeah. and ever since I saw House of the Devil, I was yeah. like, this guy is going to be one of the guys. Like, he yeah. is going to be the new face of horror. And and the group that he basically did that. Um, see, now you got me. I'm, I, I just I love this genre stuff so much. But like, yeah, uh, when he did the VHS compilation, uh, right. the an the anthology, yeah, where each director. Mm -hmm. had a little thread of the story and did their own short and it all tied together through the yeah. VHS tapes. VHS yeah. one and VHS two were fantastic. Oh yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. then um, uh, the gentleman who did uh, the guest, he just did, um, uh, he, he did uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Um, yeah. Adam Wingard, Adam Wingard, yeah. who I got to work with on the guest. Um and I was so geeked out because I I I knew his work, and so like yeah. when I got cast in a small role, on on the guest, which is one of yeah. my, it's it's now one of my favorite horror films, not because I worked on it, but because I just love his style. Um, underrated, thought, underrated, wildly underrated. Like yeah. uh, just like just the tone, yeah, of that movie. What he does with color, what he does with the music, the the number of times he just makes you sit and watch an actor and yeah. play some some meditative level like synth wave kind of music and you just he creates this this yeah. uneasy feeling but you're compelled by it like there's not a bunch of jump cut editing he's just making you sit there and watch the movie and i'm like god this is so brilliant um so uh yeah there's so many inspirations you know whether it's like obviously the the icons like Raimi, uh like friedkin like john carpenter or oh, if it's yeah. the new guys, you know, if it's like Wingard, if it's Ty West, all those, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly um, inspired by that genre, and I love all that stuff. Well, don't forget about Maxine. Maxine, I think, is this year. I think. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's the next so, follow up. Right. That's yeah. that's going to be the '80s themed one. Yep. Yeah. I'm so. I as soon as I saw the poster, I was like, I love that they've got this <laughs> whole world, this whole cinematic universe they're building yeah. around this one character. Like, this is yeah. so cool. I even thought Innkeepers was fun. Innkeepers, Innkeepers was fun. It was, was fun, really fun. Yeah. Like a, yeah. you know, all of Ty's stuff is like, 
it, it like no matter what he chooses to to do, mm -hmm. I always look forward to his style. You know, he's got a great style as a filmmaker. I even enjoyed his western he did with Ethan Hawke. Did you see? Yeah, that? and uh, uh, Tra Travolta, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Va in he's, a valley of violence or something. Yes, like that. right. Which that was good. Should, which I was so crushed that that I didn't get on that because when I saw that Ty West was shooting a western out here, I was like, yeah. Oh God, I got to get on this one. I couldn't get a role on it. I was so bummed. Fan, um, uh, fan of uh, certain westerns. Do you, do you have a, a top five? Okay, top five westerns. Tombstone is already right. Of course, the top. Of Tombstone course. is like the best. It is the most amazing thing ever. You know, I and honestly, it's like I've watched some old westerns. You know, some of that. What is it, John Huston and stuff like that? Like I've seen some of those. Mm -hmm. But I'm, you know, my introduction to the western genre was the more contemporary westerns. So, yeah. uh, you know, Tombstone, uh, Unforgiven, um, nice. uh, Silverado. You know, yeah. like Kevin Costner That's and, and yeah. Kevin Klein and like, yeah. you know, Jeff Goldblum, like all the such yeah. incredible actors. Um, yeah, I uh, let's see what what other ones um, I definitely love. Uh, I love. Well, and it's it's a silly one. It's like it's it's technically a Western, but it's, you know, like the three amigos. I mean, that's a <laughs> that's my movie, man. That's <laughs> yeah. my movie. Yeah, I, so, I bugged the hell out of my dad to rent that so many times. Yeah, when I was a, when I was young, man. And honestly, <laughs> even um, even in the more recent, you know, like uh, um, I mean, uh, like Open Range. I saw I, uh, Kevin Costner, uh, Dances Wolves, Open Range. Like his his approach to the Western genre, which he's you know, of course, uh, really undoubtedly is one of the icons of that genre, but open range in particular is uh, such a brilliant film and uh, so beautifully directed, so beautifully acted. Um, yeah. There's so many, there's so many. Yeah. I, I, I really love that genre. And I, I, Duvall, I always get man. excited when it does yeah. get a bit of a, every 10 years or so, it seems like Hollywood just decides to get together and just make a cluster of Westerns. We get a bunch of them yeah. and then they go away again. And then 10 years passes oh, yeah. and then we get some more. So I love it. Yeah. When they do that. yeah there's tons. There's so many out there. Yeah, and they keep making them. Uh, and we'll keep watching them if they're good, for sure. Yeah. Quigley right. Down Under. Quigley Down Under. You see that Selleck. one? Yeah, that's a fun Come one. Come on now. <laughs> Alan Rickman. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Alan Rickman. Yeah. How about, uh, before we keep going, how about action and martial arts movies? Do you have any uh, favorites? Oh, man, yeah. I mean, so I was, so the ones that were the most, um, the most important to me when I was younger um, I would say blood sport is still probably the, one of the, the most influential movies, as far as me even being made aware of martial arts, that there were yeah. different styles of martial arts, um, and seeing Jean-Claude Van Damme as a performer, do all the incredible things that he was doing, um, and introducing me into that genre and then going up through, uh, you know, kickboxer and, and things like that. And then, you know, some of the offshoots of that um, movies like The Perfect Weapon with Jeff Speakman. Yeah. Um, really influential film at the time. You know, really the only, really the only film that has ever depicted the art of Kempo in movies. Yeah. Like that's very, that, that, that art almost hasn't been shown uh, cinematically. Yeah. And that was such a successful portrayal of it. Um, same director as, as Kickboxer, actually, Mark DeSalle. Um and then, you know, the early Seagal stuff. Uh, yeah. When Seagal was new on the scene. Uh, first with, five. <laughs> like, what's that? The first five. The first five. Yeah, pretty yeah. much up pretty much up to Under Siege, you know? Yeah. And even though people make fun of it a lot, even though it's it's a it's a good, bad movie, Under Siege 2 is wildly entertaining, in my opinion. Oh, it's um, fun. It's but, so much fun. Yeah, and I, and I you know, uh, I'll watch. But the, the, the real, the, the original ones, when he did Above the Law, Hard to Kill, out, out for, for justice, justice uh, man. That's my that's. Death. Out I think for that's justice my favorite. Is probably, out for justice is probably favorite. his best film. I I think I usually tell people I feel like Out for Justice is his best film as an actor. Yeah, because yeah. he actually really like he has some real moments in that film where you watch and you go, you know, he's an emotionally accessible performer. Like there are some things he does in that movie where you go, all right, all right, yeah. that's some that's yeah. some real acting actually. You know, and, you and um. William uh, Forsyth so, played a great villain. Yeah, William Forsyth is an yeah. incredible bad guy in that movie. He plays a great villain. Uh, Dan Asanto, 
uh, oh, yeah. playing playing the sticks character, sticks. having that in, that incredible get, get stick fight. Get him sticks. In the, yeah, <laughs> I love that they just had a guy who was a stick fighting expert just kind of hanging out in that bar <laughs> in case anybody ever had to be in a stick fight. <laughs> that's what it's all about. Weird place Love to it. have like a bar yeah. in Brooklyn has like you know the, yeah. the world's scariest stick fighter apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, all of those all of those films um, really really influential to me. You know, I yeah. loved I loved big action films uh, of that genre that were much more mainstream, like Commando with Schwarzenegger, like Die Hard with Bruce, Bruce Willis. Yeah. But the ones that the ones that I was the most interested in that I watched the most times were the martial arts uh, action movies, the American martial arts genre in the uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Best and even, of the best. even some of the more obscure ones, uh, Thomas yeah. Ian Griffith um, uh, in um, Excessive Force, you know. That was great. Like that. Yeah, that's a great movie. And, yeah. and, uh, and then seeing him pop up in other genre pieces like John Carpenter's Vampires playing the villain. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. so many good uh, examples of, of, of those of the martial arts genre of action and then crossovers like that, that I just love. Yeah. This is, this is, it's so good. There's so much out there. So much. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Breaking bad. What? Okay. So here's the thing I am in, you will see me. You it's one of those don't blink. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm, it's pretty quick. Um, there's an episode in season one where, um, uh, where Heisenberg has to go and get an unusual amount of chemicals in order to make a big batch of drugs. So they have to break into this chemical plant. Yeah. There's a security guard that they lock in a porta potty. That's me. There you go. That's, That's it. The, I think that, I say like two things. I think I, I like knock on the door and I'm like, hey, what's going on? So my answer yeah. was did, like, a did you sh- show some SEP? I, I didn't because I didn't know, <laughs> none of us knew what we were working on. Like we didn't know that we were working on a show that was going to become arguably the best television show in history. Like, like it was brand new. Yeah. And so I, for me, it was just another day of work. Uh, but then it ended up becoming, you know, this incredible iconic thing. Have you watched a better call Saul? I, some people say it's better. Like it's a, it's a fantastic show. Yeah. A lot of my friends have gotten to work on that. That's another really great thing is that that, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul um, have been able to, they hired a lot of locals in Albuquerque from the local uh, Albuquerque film industry. Nice. And were able to get just years and years and years of top quality work on really important, well done shows. And that's, that's really been great for, for the film community here in Albuquerque. Did you enjoy uh, Nobody? I haven't seen it. It's I I've been it's been reckon, I know <laughs> that's been recommended to me multiple times. I'm gonna add it to the list. I've heard it's great. I've heard it's great. That's it. You're watching it tonight. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll enjoy it, man. You'll get a, you'll get a kick out of it for sure. It's yeah, right up our, it's, it's right up our alley, man. It's right. Okay. Up our alley. All right. Uh, the, this next one here, this fantasy horror flick. Odd yeah. Thomas. Odd Thomas. And, you know, Rustin Power, Anton Yelchin. Yep. I enjoyed was, this. This was fun. That was a great gig. Um, I was so excited about that because um, Stephen Summers, um, who of course directed The Mummy and The Mummy Returns and G.I. Joe and Van Helsing. Deep Helfing. Rising. Deep yeah, Rising. Yeah, yes, Deep Rising. Yeah, with Treat Williams. Like, that's, yeah. like he had directed a bunch of movies that I loved. And so when I got a gig on that, I was so excited. And he had me, um, uh, he told me, I think it was another one where I think I had maybe six weeks of prep and he was like hey man i want you lifting weights i want you to be much as like he's like you're already a big guy i want you to be as big as you can because i want you to really tower over anton when you've got your scene your fight scene with him i want you to look much bigger than him so i was like okay so i'm like eating six eight times a day lifting heavy weights trying to be as big as i can by the time they came around and uh that was an absolute blast and um that was also when i learned that not all stunts are on like harnesses and stuff i thought you know whenever i saw anybody do anything dangerous in a movie i was like well you know but they're all on wires and everything um you know we did a lot of stunt work a lot of chase scenes a lot of fight scenes a lot of busting through doors and jumping over stuff like that and yeah and i was like oh no some of this stuff you actually just have to do you just have to do it (laughs) like it actually is some of it you have to like 
kind of do it for real. And, 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 it, and it was really fun. I got to work with a fantastic um, stunt coordinator, Al Goto, uh, on that. That was where I, I met Al. And he did a great job uh, uh, coordinating all of that. And he later on was one of the connections that got me connected with Paper Tigers years later. Um, nice. And that was where that started. But yeah, it was a pleasure working with Anton. It was a pleasure working with Steven Summers. Um, that was a really fun gig. Nice. Copy that, man. I remember having to kick a door in on that one. I remember this one thing. I had to kick a door in. And it was the balsa wood door. And I'd never kicked a fake door. So I asked the prop guy. I was like, so how hard do I hit this? And he's like, well, you know, it's balsa wood. So it's like, it's going to come apart. And then he, he turned around and then he stopped and turned back around. He's like, but don't hit it too lightly or you'll look like a pussy. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I just, so I was like, I'm just going to hit it as hard as I can. That yeah. thing, that thing disintegrated. Like it, it was <laughs> like, it turned to dust. I hit it so hard because I was like, well, I don't want to look like a pussy. So I like, I got a running start and I just blasted through that door and the whole thing was like, down to the size of toothpicks because i was like okay yeah. all right all right that, I, I broke the door correctly <laughs> nice, nice. Got me that. it's fun it's fun it was so fun getting able yeah. to break breakaway props are so fun like getting to <laughs> getting to bust through doors and break glass and all that other stuff that is always anytime you get to do that is a fun day uh whiskey tango foxtrot there with old billy bob thornton there that was super fun yeah, that was yeah. such a blast uh Thank that was Let's see. I uh, that was one of those movies where I got to, I got to improvise a lot, and I didn't know how much of it they would use. But um, one of the scenes that made it, um, they were doing interviews with soldiers. You know, Tina Fey plays a a, a war reporter, and so they just threw uh, questions at us with no prep. They just like set us up and just had us answer questions that that she had come up with, and. Um, for some reason, the movie Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger popped into my head when they started asking me questions. So I started talking about the movie Predator, and that ended up being one of my improvs that made it into the movie. And I was just like kind of shocked that of all the improv we did, that that was the one that they picked. Um, That's amazing. And uh, that that was a Predator, Predator poster right here. Oh, yeah. Incredible <laughs> movie. Incredible movie. But that was really fun. Tina Fey was great. Billy nice. Bob was great. I got to do improv with both of them. And that was that was a really, that was a great experience. Copy that. This next one here, this is a big one. I mean, this movie blew me away. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it to be this good. But Sicario, right. man. Oh, holy that's, shit. That's one of my all-time favorite gigs. Just be that—that's another one. I would say the guests in Sicario are the two movies that I watch. I happen to be in them, but I don't watch them because I'm in them. I watch them because they're just great films. They're—they're they're films that I'm so privileged to have been a part of. Um, I remember not—you know—when you read for small roles, they don't really tell you much about it. So I read a small role with two lines was told I got cast and was invited to a rehearsal, which was very unusual. You don't usually get to go to rehearsals. Um, and I walk in and Denis, the director was there. He had done prisoners with Hugh Jackman, um, which was, you know, critically acclaimed. Uh, yeah. I walk into that room. Denis is there. Josh Brolin is there. Emily Blunt is there. Benicio del Toro is there. I look over Roger Deakins, the, the best living cinematographer, yeah. argu arguably yep. in the world, is sort of looking around at the lighting and everything. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Oh, God. <laughs> like, I'm, I, it was such an incredible, that was such an exciting experience. And, and the, the, the sort of funny part about that one is that the, uh, the on-set photographer, we rehearsed that day and then we filmed the next day. Yeah. And they had a publicist there and a photographer taking publicity stills. And there's one shot, the one you just pulled up, where I'm sitting at a computer. Yeah. So, and Emily Blunt is, I think, on, on the other side of uh, Josh there. And yeah. um, that ended up being the photo that they used to promote the movie all over the world. I think it's on the back of the Blu-ray. Oh, no shit. And so it, awesome. looks like, it looks like I'm like one of the lead guys in the movie. I have people <laughs> from high school like seeing that photo and being like, hey, Congratulations! You finally made it, and I'm like, look, I have two. I have two lines. I'm in that movie. 
for like 30 yeah. seconds. Don't I, I'm grateful yeah. I was in the movie, but don't yeah. don't don't base where my career is off of this one picture. <laughs> that was just the right time, right place kind of thing. Yeah. But still <laughs> awesome. I mean, still yeah. awesome to be a part of this movie. I mean so honored, so man. honored because it's such an iconic film. It's such a oh, yeah. beautifully, beautifully acted, written, directed. It's such an incredible film. Uh Benicio's best role, do you think? Arguably, uh, one of his best. I mean, he's there's so many to choose. Top five, from, yeah, yeah. And his uh, his role in that in in that film is so powerful. Like uh, the, the things that he does in that, and I I only got to see a small bit of it on set, but when I saw the film, I was just blown away. Copy that, copy that. All right, we're almost there, guys. We're gonna get right. to it. What do we got? It's got killer in the title, similar to Cop versus Killer. Okay, Killer Cafe. Uh huh. It's a project uh, coming out really soon that you're a part yes. of. Uh, yes. Talk about this. I know you can't spoil anything, but uh, give us a little bit of a, could you at least tell us a like brief plot synopsis? For yes. Us? Yes. It's okay. a, um, let's see. I wonder if I'm allowed. I feel like I should be allowed to say the premise because. Would you like me to read it on IMDb? Is there a plot Go ahead synopsis and read on that and then I need to fill in anything. Okay. <laughs> All right, give me a second here. I'm not sure what they're telling people. <laughs> hey, if it's on IMDb, you know, it's it's out there, so it's right. not your fault. All right, hold on. Give me a second. Killer Cafe. I love the title already. Yeah, it's a great. It's uh it's it's uh written okay. and directed by Keith Jardine, um uh, yes. UFC UFC legend. Yeah. Keith Jardine. Yeah, and I I I love seeing him in movies. Yeah, I think he's, he had, and, he's on the Punisher show. I think he had he. You'll see him in fights and action movies and stuff. Yeah, you'll you see, see him, him pop up. He was in uh, yeah. Bird Box. He was in uh, um, Inherent Vice. He pops up in all kinds of stuff. He's yeah. done a great job as an actor. Tate uh, Tate Fletcher is also in the movie. Tate has been killed by every kid. Tate has been killed by the Equalizer. John Wick. Uh, <laughs> he's been killed by everybody. So uh, there's yeah. a bunch of there's a bunch of incredible uh, actors in this film. And uh, it's written by Keith as well. Yeah. Yes. Yep. All Great right. Script. Here's the plot synopsis. All right. What do we got? A serial killer on the run finds himself trapped in an inescapable situation. At first, enthralled by the challenge, as time passes, the killer's psyche starts to unravel. So there we go. That is a very carefully phrase. <laughs> Don't don't, I wanna, don't spoil I wanna it. I want to say so much more, and I bet they would kick me if I said anything. Else. <laughs> I will. I'm going to keep my mouth shut about what it is, but it's a very intriguing premise. Okay. Um, it's a very fun movie. Um, it has uh, a lot of thrills, a lot of jokes, a lot of uh, drama in it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, we just filmed that right before Christmas, and uh, that was an absolute blast. Copy that. I'll have to be on the lookout for Killer Cafe, baby. If you're a but, fan of the show Roswell, uh, Brendan and Mahandra, uh, who are the leads in that show, Roswell, are the leads in this film as well. Oh, all right. Oh, really quickly, back to the guest. I forgot to mention this when we yes. were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, usually has movie night with his family. They watch all kinds of stuff, horror movies, yep. action, and all this stuff. And he's like, he loves the guest. He's like me. He loves that movie. Yep, great. And he wanted to show them that movie. And they didn't want to watch it. They were like, ah, this looks stupid. Ah, what is this? Ah, they didn't want to watch it. They really didn't want to watch it. He yep. really had to twist their arm. Yep. Right? After they got done watching it, they all loved it. Whole family loved Good. it. Good. See, I love that. They were like, that was an that. amazing that's, movie. Loved it. That's from, something, from you old know, to young. Loved that's it. That's something I didn't really realize about certain genre pictures, too, is that particularly with thriller and horror genres, some people just decide, like, it's an interesting genre. Um, it's an interesting genre because there are people who will watch every horror movie, and there are people who are like, I don't watch horror movies, period. Like, if they right. hear that it's a horror movie, they're already out. They don't even care if it gets great reviews, if yeah. it's a big hit. They're like, I don't watch those. Right. And so um, it's interesting that if you commit to that genre as a filmmaker, you yeah. have to get over that hurdle of like, hey, some people are just, as soon as they hear horror, they're going to be like, I don't watch those. And then you have to kind of like be like, yeah, but like this one is is good. It's interesting because whatever, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I had a, I knew it was something. I was like, I gotta tell them. I gotta tell them. That's awesome. I got you here. Yeah, they loved it, man. They absolutely loved it. Uh, but now, cop versus killer. 
Before yes. we play the trailer, my friend, how did this project come about? Is this something you always wanted to write? Yes, yes. Uh, this is uh, this is a project. Um, do you want me to talk over it as you're pulling this up? Actually, yeah. Let's let's go ahead and play the trailer now. There okay, we go, great. baby. Cop versus killer. Everybody watching. Check it out. Enjoy. Lucy, can you come here for a minute, please? Where's the gift? I thought we were doing this tonight. You're going to be late. How do you know? Because you're always late. How am I supposed to pull a trailer without a truck to pull a trailer? You can't live at the rest stop. You stop, it, you rest, and then you go. Everybody knows this. I always burn. I didn't know it was against the law. You're not supposed to tell me that. Oh, I burn trash. I burn wood. I burn brush. But I know every year I burn. Afternoon, sir. You know why I pulled you over? You were driving erratically back there by the rest stop, and I noticed you got no rear license plate. Did you know that? Sir, can you hear me okay? I was looking for you. You were looking for me. What does that mean? Did you call the police? Sheriff's Department? I think I will be you. Step out of the car, sir. <clears throat> no, sir! No! day for summer travelers was shattered by bullets by a deranged gunman earlier today. In an unusual twist, authorities say the main suspect is Sheriff Bill Abrams. The suspect was seen wearing a sheriff's uniform and driving Abrams' car. The hell? This is a big misunderstanding. If I could just make a phone call. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe we'll save them the trouble of arresting you. You don't want to do that. The hell I don't. <laughs> Notify SWAT. I'm heading the task force to apprehend the shooter. We don't actually know if it's a sheriff that's committing these crimes. doing this we're doing this yeah there it is oh there yeah it is. oh yeah that trailer and the movie that scratched the action thriller itch baby yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great yeah man uh i i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it man i was I'm like so well, speaking speaking of genre films yeah boom, you got one right here man yeah sure. that was and that was the idea you know i wrote that movie a long time ago initially i wrote it as a found footage movie like a blair witch kind of a thing yeah um to try to um i was just trying to write something that i thought i could shoot with my friends you know something that was ultra low budget that i thought well we'll just go out here and even if we have kind of like you know, bad, uh, bad cameras and stuff like that. If we do it as a found footage movie, then it won't matter. Right. And so that script was, it was around for years and, you know, it almost got made a couple times and almost got bought a couple times, but it just kept not happening. And then, um, you know, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine reached out and said, Hey, I've, I've got a little bit of money and, uh, I think I know somebody else who has a little bit of money. So if you're willing to make this on a really low budget, um, you know, you, you can, you can get it made. And so I just sort of had this now or never feeling. So I, I, I sat down, I read the script and I thought, okay, I'm going to throw out the found footage thing because I feel like that's, that's kind of limiting. It's kind of out of, it's kind of okay. gone, gone out of style. I said, I'm right. just going to write it as a movie. I'm going to rewrite it as a movie, rewrote it. And it's interesting it, after years and years and years of not getting the, not being able to get the movie made, from the moment we had the conversation that there might be some financing to the moment we were shooting was eight weeks. Like the whole thing came together in, in two months, like all of a wow. sudden. And it was really the decision. It was just like a little bit of money that we needed and, and the decision to just make the movie and just be like, you know, I, I, I just realized like, gosh, I've been saying for 
10 years that I'm going to make this movie and I keep not making it. So like, let's just, let's do it. Let's make the movie. Let's fucking go. That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Reddit, Red Eclipse Films, you beat me to the punch. You beat me to it, but I'm going to show it. He goes, badass looks like Silent Rage meets The Hitcher with John Carpenter vibes. Yes. Okay. That, so The Hitcher, yeah. The Hitcher is definitely the specific. Now we're talking the original Hitcher. We're talking the Rutger Hauer. Hell Hitcher. yes. That movie is actually a movie that I asked um, Seth, the cinematographer, if he had ever seen. And he said no. And I said, you got to watch that movie as a visual reference and as a reference in tone to what yeah. I'm going for. Because, you know, with a lot of horror movies, one of the sort of staples of the genre is that a lot of it happens, a lot of them happen at night. And so right. you kind of are like, you know, you're playing with the dark, you're playing with the shadows and things like that. Yeah. But uh, at least half of our movie was going to happen during the day. And so I said, you know, the, one of the great things about The Hitcher is about half of that movie happens during the day. And it's and you it's like, well, OK, so how do you make things scary when it's broad daylight out? But if you go and watch that, even in the scenes where it's broad daylight out, if a character is sitting in the back of a car there's all this shadow on their face and there's, they've mm -hmm. kind of, they, they've put a bunch of, a ton of diffusion and they're on a long lens. So like everything is out of all the backgrounds really out of focus. And there's a lot of contrast in the image. Um, I was just, you know, we, we, we sort of picked apart the visual motifs in that movie and was like, why does this work? Why is this so unsettling? Why is this so dark? Even though we're, we're literally looking at a scene that's happening in broad daylight in the middle of the desert, it still feels creepy. How do you do that in, in the middle of the day? And so that was that was something we took a lot of a lot of visual cues from. Is like, okay, this is the type of thing we're going for. Yeah, it's and you, and you nailed it. You definitely nailed it. Uh, so, I was thinking, you. I was thinking of that Silent Rage, the hero and the terror. I yep. was thinking about all those kind of movies. But yeah, exactly. you got more positive feedback here. Looking awesome. That's right. They loved the trailer. Michael, what's going on? He says that was awesome. Okay, we're well, good. I'm glad they yeah. like the trailer. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep it going here. So yeah, he said eight weeks. Yeah, we had eight week. We shot that whole movie in ten days. Um, and oh, we had wow. No, we had no choice. I would have loved. I had actually when I had finished the second the when I had finished the rewrite the most recent rewrite I was like, we need twenty days or we can't possibly shoot this movie. And then the fight, you know, the money that we raised, we could only afford to pay the cast and crew for ten. Right. And I was like. Right. Okay, well, I guess we're shooting it in 10 then because like we're just, yeah. this movie's never going to happen unless I just shoot it. So we just we took a version of what I had on the page and crammed it into uh, that 10 day schedule. Um, ended up doing a bunch of second unit stuff, um, you know, months later, trying to like fill in scenes and, you know, get get our establishing shots and create special effects and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, still yeah. like a real shoestring approach and um and I I'm amazed at what we got away with. On well, it's film. pretty pretty impressive for 10 day shoot. I mean, that's pretty impressive, man. Well We're done. so lucky. We're so like and 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 every day, you know, I tell people working on that movie every single day the schedule was so tight and there were so many things. Like every single day started with some sort of disaster. Oh, wow. That, that threatened to shut down the entire film every single day. And so when I would get back to the hotel at night, I would go into my hotel room and to an empty room because my girlfriend was producing and she was usually out fixing a problem or putting out a fire someplace. Yeah. I would get back to the hotel room. I would have the room myself for a second and I would just go nine more days. Right. Eight, eight yeah. more days, seven more days. Every day that I got back, I was like, okay, we're, because if we lost one day, we were not going to finish that film because the schedule was already so unreasonable yeah. and there was so little money that if we had a bad weather day or if somebody right. got hurt or whatever, I was like, we literally cannot afford to lose even one day on the schedule. So it was, it was a miracle that we finished a miracle. Copy that. It's almost, it reminds me when I interviewed Bao Tran about the Paper Tigers and he talked about the rooftop fight finale. Oh my fight. goodness. Yeah. I and how that, that, how that but, didn't happen. That yeah. almost didn't happen because of the weather. 
Yep. And then they the, wouldn't have had no fight. That was the last day of shooting. That's it. No infidelity the, fight. The pinnacle of the yeah. entire movie, yeah. like where the where the where the heroes come together to fight yeah. the villain, and it's like the yeah. most important moment in the movie. And they were in this terrible position of like yep. fighting the weather and fight trying to find the right location and all this other stuff. So like, yeah, I I sympathize with him uh, a yeah. hundred times more now, having been through it as a director. And exactly. just being at the mercy of of all of the elements that uh, there there was a there was a, actually a a, a scene um, I won't spoil what happens in the scene but there's a pivotal scene that happens later in the movie inside the police station and that scene was supposed to happen outside um, it was supposed to happen centered around a cop car my character was going to be locked inside a cop car and I was going to be in a state of peril and there was going to be all this stuff happening. And a massive windstorm came up and it was like blowing, blowing over trees and knocking out power and stuff. And I looked outside and I was like, if we try to shoot this scene outside, we're going to be fighting the elements the whole night. And we're going to waste all this time just trying to keep all the equipment from tipping over. Yeah. We're not going to, we're not going to get the footage we need. And it was one of the performers last days on set. We had to wrap. Um, Zeta Zhang, my deputy, uh, um, we had to wrap her that day. So immediately I went to, went to the actors and the cinematographer and the crew and said, okay, new plan. See how everything says here, this is outside. Take all the action that happens in this scene. Now it happens in the police station because we can't shoot outside tonight. And actually it worked out great. It actually improved the scene, in my opinion. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that you're dealing with as a director every single day on an independent film is yeah. that you're you're running out of time every single day and you're having to to change creative choices based on things that have nothing to do with creativity where you're just like okay I've lo like day 1 the day before we started we lost our location we lost the first location of the day and so we had to scramble and find a new location for day one. Like we're 24 hours away from filming and we have nowhere to film. Like we we're getting ready to make the call sheets and we don't have an address to put on the call sheets wow. because we yeah. just lost the location. Man. So every Man. single day there was something like that, that threatened to shut down the entire production. Yeah. And every single day we came up with a solution. And, and now I know going into, you know, as I make more movies, I'm going to expect that I'm going to be like, okay, there's, what I have on the page. Right. And then there's what is actually going to happen when we get there. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I got to give the shout out here to Mr. Kevin Conan Bankins. Yes. Uh, I got to give him the shout out because Kevin, brother, you killed it. Literally. <laughs> you, <laughs> you killed it in the movie. He did uh, an amazing job. What What is it about... It's some you know some movies where you don't really know the the backstory. You don't really know that much about the antagonist. Yeah, but that's what makes him more scary. Yep. And uh, and that's you know in this movie definitely it, it wasn't needed. We didn't need this huge long backstory, you know, uh, about his character. It wasn't. Really yeah, and I've needed. got an interesting story about what you do learn about because um, in the draft that I was going to shoot, there was even less information about him. Mm. And at one point, Lou Ferrigno was going to play the killer. Um, <laughs> no way. Yeah, we got the script to him. He loved it. Um, I had a meeting with him. He he was very excited about the role. He he thought it would be a good time. Um, but his note was that he, as an actor he wanted more to do. He said, you know, I don't, I don't say a lot in this movie. I would like more, more is like, he's like, tell me why this guy does what he does, where he's from all the stuff. So I wrote a bunch more that was not in the, in the draft yeah. that he had read. Right. And then due to scheduling conflicts, he had to drop out. Mm. And so I went to my buddy, Kevin, who I, who is a, uh, a trained fighter, trained weapons expert. And um, someone I, I had cast in a couple short films and said, Hey, uh, you're my villain in my movie. If you want it, you're like, and he, I can, now I can't imagine anybody else having played the role. He did it so perfectly. And, and honestly, when we got to the scenes where 
I had written a bunch of extra stuff. I didn't know if it would be too much for Kevin because he wasn't, he didn't, hadn't done a ton of big roles, uh, really, yeah. really no big roles in film. So I went to him and said, Hey, you know, if this is too much dialogue, I can just, I don't, I can just cut it. We don't, we don't need to do any of this. And he yeah. said, Oh no, no, no. I've, I've been working on this. He's like, I'd like to give it a try. And every time he had a bunch of dialogue, he just nailed it. He had slaughtered it. Pairing. He was perfect. He was perfect for it. And so he elevated that character and elevated the movie by being just uh, such a great surprise. For sure. For sure. Uh, chats also, uh, someone in chat also said it has the, uh, the dual vibes. Uh, oh man, that's another one I watched. That yeah. I, So that's again, the desert thriller. So we talked about sub genres, right? So uh, like that's another sub genre of horror movies because the desert thriller is mm -hmm. very, very specific. A lot of yeah. the, a lot of, a lot of the uh, excitement happens outside. A lot of it usually happens during the day. Um, a lot of it tends to cover a lot of geographic space you know like a, yeah. the, the the desert thrillers tend to be road movies or at very least uh if it's a movie like tremors um uh it tends to span a large yeah. geographic area so i was looking at that genre saying like okay i've written a desert thriller how do i make it like the desert thrillers that i love because that's a very specific genre and duel was another one that i did a bunch of research on i didn't just re-watch the movie but i read about how spielberg made it and how he managed to do such an unreasonable production schedule in such a short period of time uh, i remember reading one thing that he did in order to get as many driving shots as he could he would station like five or six cameras on the road like half a mile apart so that when they would do a drive-by they weren't just getting one or two angles they would get five or six uh, in five or six different landscapes so oh, that wow. they could cover a ton of ground yeah so that so they were gathering a ton of driving shots every single take so they drove like they would drive three miles but they get like six or seven shots out of one pass and wow. so I was reading everything that he did in order to make such an unreasonable production schedule fit into uh, uh, make a movie, uh, a desert thriller fit into such an unreasonable production schedule and took a lot of notes from that. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Have you seen the film Road Games? I have not seen Road Games. That's another one for the list. OK. Road you will, Games. You will, okay. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis has a small part in that. Oh, but, cool. OK. But Road Games is, is good, man. It's out there in, nice. in, in Australian outback. And the truckers out there just to deliver some goods, and I will not spoil anything else. But yeah, uh, back to oh, Kevin. Lose you? No, I'm here. I'm here. Can you see me? Samurai's gone. Am I I'm still gone? On? Oh, I, I, is it I'm, my connection or his? Let's hmm. see. Huh. I, I feel like I'm here. That's weird. I don't know. Maybe we're both not on. Hmm. That's weird. Uh, chat, can you see me and uh, Matt? Let's see here. There we go. Let us know, chat, if you can see us. <laughs> okay. So, Matt, uh, let's see. Matt's probably he probably bounced out to bounce back in. Okay. That's what happens when you go live. <laughs> All right. Let me uh see. Okay. Oh, you see both of us. Okay. All right. Are we back? And we're back, baby. Yeah. All that right, happens. We're back. Yeah. we're back. This is what happens when you I'm go also, live. <laughs> I am also you're gonna you're gonna you're you're gonna lose me though here in a few minutes because I got another thing I got to shoot here in a little bit. But okay. I'm uh, I'm having a blast. I want to be on here all day. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, man, it's great to have you here. But yeah, let's just keep. Uh, I'm just gonna play the trailer while you're talking here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Give me a couple more a uh, couple more things to mention, and uh, and then we yeah, can tell people yeah, we can wrap go it up. watch it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else. Um. So we shot the movie very quickly. Um, we had a great cast. Um, there's a company called Triangle U Studios. They are based in Truth or Consequences. 
uh, where we shot the movie. We shot it in, a, which is a great name for a town, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Um, yeah. We shot it down there. Um, uh, Jordan and Dan, who run um, uh, Triangle U Studios, uh, were instrumental in us getting uh, um, getting that movie produced. They have a production studio down there. Um, they invested in the film. They gave us uh, use of their their resources. And honestly, everybody everybody down there was great. Um, the the town was so excited to have us there. They were so excited that we were making a movie. Uh, this is. Rachel Michaela, uh, who played the reporter in the film, brilliant actress, uh, very talented. Um, uh, she has her own uh, comedic improv troupe. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you uh, all of the uh, the. <laughs> anytime it went to the news, yeah, reports, those were hilarious, man. I'm I, so it glad was, you like those. It was get, it was giving me Paul Verhoeven movie vibes. Oh, good. You know? That that's <laughs> like Robocop, yeah, that sort of starship yeah. uh, that. That like Starship Robocop Troopers, or yeah. Starship Troopers kind yeah. of satirical kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's uh, her and um, and Jack Lutz, who played Gary, the cameraman, did a great job. Uh, Jamie Bernadette, uh, who is a scream queen um, and a brilliant actress. Um, she she plays my wife in the film. There's uh, Joe Conway, who plays Todd Woodland, Master Ken's faithful assistant. Yeah. yeah. He did a great job. <laughs> um, that was, there's Chris Dempsey, who plays Lieutenant Steele. Zeta Zhang, professional wrestler. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, very, very talented, uh, funny. Uh, she's the most popular recurring guest on the Master Ken show. Her her episodes have the most views. Um, so I knew I had to get her in the movie. Yeah. Um, who else? Uh, there's Chris Casamasa, who plays uh, Scorpion in the original yes. Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah, uh, he, he makes an appearance in the film. He was I, he did a fantastic job. Him and Zakiya Hansen have a great scene in the movie. Uh, I gotta um, get you know, a big shout out to Chris. I gotta get him on the show in the future for sure. Yeah, he's great. Now, he's a great guest. Really quick, was it your idea or his idea to, to throw in that little Mortal Kombat conquest joke? That was his. Nice, he, Chris. He he added that in, and I was and I noticed it, and then he's like, "That's for the fans," and I was like, "Cool, I love nice. it." I was like, "We're gonna leave it in." <laughs> <laughs> nice, Chris. Oh my goodness. So but yeah, this, this. was. The, this the fight diner fight was, scene was, is one of the best. Shit. That's one of my most favorite moments in the entire film. Oh, it's good shit, man. And I love the 80s vibe that the movie gives, especially with the amazing soundtrack. Yeah. The soundtrack really has that 80s vibe to it, man. It was great. Yeah, so there's two there's two, two um, things about the music. Uh, Megan Penning, uh, my girlfriend who's the producer on the film, she did all of the music that has lyrics in it that sound like pop songs. Nice. Um, she's a musician as well. And then uh, Sean Hettinger... From Neon Moon Studios did all of the uh, composing, all of the uh, the synthwave stuff, and their stuff worked so well together. And yeah. I wasn't even sure too, because honestly, that was the decision I sort of committed to, thinking like I don't even know if that music belongs in this movie, but I love that style, and so it I worked. was like, okay, I'm yeah. so glad that you say that because people really comment on how much they love the music, and it was a big risk to commit to that style of music, not knowing right. if it was going to work. And in my opinion, it really does. It's been, well, it fits a genre film, so it's perfect. Yeah. That's what I but, wanted. So, But yeah, oh, there's some good stuff here. I love, he gave you some really good hard elbows to yeah. the back. That was <laughs> great. Was that and, that you looked know, real. That, 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 looked, that hurt. The, the, that scene, we were, we were so far behind that day, the, the day that we shot the diner. All of yeah. the things that happened in the, in the diner in that movie were shot in one day. So we had day interior, day exterior, night interior, night exterior. We had um, fight scenes. We had dialogue. We had gunplay. We had um, background actors. We had um, weapon stuff, blood effects. And so by the time we got to the fight scene, which he, Kevin and I had rehearsed like crazy, we yeah. had about an hour to shoot the entire fight because... Wow. The crew was exhausted, and the DP even came to me and was like, I don't know if we have, you might have to cut the fight scene because I don't know if we have time. Yeah. And I said, here's what we're going to do. Start rolling, and we're going to do the whole fight scene all the way through, and then I just want you to keep rolling and change the angle, and we'll do it again, and then keep rolling, change the angle, we'll do it again. So we just ran the fight scene like five nice. or six times straight through without stopping, and he just the and he just readjusted the angle each time, and that's what we ended up being to cut cut together. And 
it's we're so lucky uh, that Kevin and I have been working together as martial artists for 15 years. So we we have trained together. And toward the end of the fight, that last uh, the last part of the fight, we're really just making stuff up. Like he was just sort of throwing things at me, and I was kind of just <laughs> reacting and just kind of yeah. hoping for the best. So so yeah. that was it was it was great. It worked. It was, it was brutal. It, yeah, it, it really does. We're too. so lucky. We're so lucky. But you, it's not a, it's not a real. That's a great shot right there. Look at that. Look at the lighting. Oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's not a true genre flick, unless you get the roundhouse kick in there, that's baby. Right, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man. Well, I love. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I wish I had more time. Uh, and I oh, really it's all want good. to. Uh, I really want to encourage anybody who's watching to go to go to uh, you can you can buy or rent the movie on Amazon. You can if you don't mind commercials, you can watch it on Tubi. Um, it's out there on a bunch of platforms. Um, yeah. And if you do watch the film, please, whether you like it or not, rate it and comment on it, because the yes. more engagement we get, the more people see the film. So make sure to comment on it, rate it. You don't have to like it. But if you yeah. do like it, make some noise share it with people, tell people about it, because we really want people to see this film because yeah. we want to make more of them. Yeah, share this video. Get this video out there. Whatever Absolutely. Helps to help let promote people it. know. Yeah. Share this interview. Share this video. Yeah. Let, yeah. let the world know. Matt, it's an honor. This is your second home, brother. We got to get you back. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Matt, Thank don't, you. don't go anywhere, but all you badasses, y'all know what you need to do. Check it out. Cop versus Killer, Amazon Prime, Tubi. Check it out. Keep watching movies, support the genre films, action, martial arts, thrill thrillers, and horror. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys.